So in geometry, you learn all about different angles, right? And you'll you'll kind of talk about acute, obtuse, right angles, and you know we become masters of all the different angles. But what's an interesting topic in geometry is what about when the angles are specifically interacting with one another? And then you start to learn about what's called pairs of angles, right? So you could have, uh, you know, this essentially is an angle here, this is an angle here, and they're interacting. Um, you can have angles like this that are opposite one another, and they there's names associated with these different pairs of angles and more importantly there's implications for what the measures are and um, and what they add to the sums and, and and whatnot so the first example of sort of pairs of angles would be complementary versus supplementary and what that really it's these are pretty straightforward what that means is if two angles add to 90 degrees then they are complementary right and if two angles add to uh, 180 degrees then they're supplementary. And the hard part is like memorizing that. You know, you're on a test and you remember these two mentories and I forget. I think supple means a lot, so maybe more degrees, I don't know, whatever. You're gonna have to memorize that. So complementary are two angles that add to 90. Supplementary are two angles that add to 180. And it looks different. They might say something like this. They might just tell you that, you know, angle A is equal to, you know, 30 degrees. And they'll say angle B is equal to 60 degrees. And they'll say, what are these, complementary or supplementary? And you look at them and it's obvious, this guy plus this guy equals 90 degrees, so therefore these two angles are complementary, right? You know, maybe they'll say the same thing. Okay, uh, so angle A is equal to, you know, 120, and angle B is equal to degrees, and angle B is equal to, you know, 60 degrees, whatever. What are these, complementary or supplementary? So when they give you the actual measurements, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to figure out, <coughs> but sometimes when there's pictures, you have to be a little more witty in your response, right? So for example, what if they give you something like this? Okay, so here's a right angle, and they divide it out, and this one's A and this one's B, or maybe over here, you have a linear pair. Well, let's call this angle A and this angle B. And the one on the left, they'll say, angle A and B, what is their relationship? Are they complementary or supplementary? And you'd have to know, hey, well, I know that every right angle is 90. Looks like A and B add together to form that 90, so A and B are, are complementary. Over here, same thing. A and B, there's no measurements. I have no idea what these are. They don't say what the degrees are, but I do know that together they form a line. They are a linear pair. Angle A plus angle B forms this perfect line. So no matter what, they have to be equal to, the two of them summed together have to be equal to 180. So therefore they're supplementary angles. So I think complementary and supplementary angles as far as angle pairs, pairs of angles is pretty straightforward. So the next topic for, for pairs of angles is adjacent angles. And you know, if you know from just common sense everyday English, if you say two buildings are adjacent to one, one another, or they say, hey, my, I'm so lucky because my two friends are sitting adjacent to each other. Adjacent just means next door to or right next to. So a perfect example would be like this. You have two angles, A and B, and they are next to each other in a row, right? So they are adjacent angles. It doesn't imply that they add to a specific number. You can't assume that these two add to 90 or 180 or any number. You just know that A and B are adjacent to one another, okay? Here's another one. Are A and B adjacent to another? Are they in a row? And the answer is totally yes. The only thing, like, I'm trying to think of an example when they're not adjacent. You could have angle A over here and angle B over here. They're not related at all. They are not adjacent to each other. It's when they're literally touching. They're next door. In fact, they share sort of this, this line here and they have a line in common. So that's how you get to uh, adjacent angles. A linear pair though does have pretty heavily, heavy implications. So a linear pair would be like this. You have angle A and B. And it literally, the name gives it away. It is a pair of angles that forms a line. You can see that this here is a straight line. Now my drawing is not perfect, but if you added angle A to angle B together, they definitely form a linear pair. And they add to, so by definition, anybody, they need two angles that are a linear pair, they have to add to 180 degrees. And if you go back to our first little definition, then they are therefore supplementary. So A and B are a linear pair, therefore A plus B is 180, therefore A plus B is definitely supplementary. So some people have a hard time looking at that. Like if you said, here's, uh, you know, three angles, when you said here's A, B, right, and C, and you said, our B and C, that is probably the worst drawing I've ever done. Okay, there's a better B. Okay, so if I said our angle B and C, a linear pair, they're definitely not. Look carefully. Here's B, right, and you add C into that mix. These guys here do not form a perfect line. 
So A, B, and C all together come together to form a line, but B and C are not a linear pair, just like A and B are not a linear pair. It has to be two angles that together form the whole line, and they're 180 degrees. So, and then and again, when we start to do practice problems, linear pairs, you'll know that A plus B has to equal 180 degrees. Okay, and so the last kind of key relationship or pairs of angles are vertical angles. And the best way to explain that is whenever you have an X, right, any angle that's opposite the other angle on that X. So for example, if you had A and B here, they are vertical angles and vertical angles are always congruent. So let's go on, let's add A, B, and then what if I had C and D? And I said, who is a vertical, who is a vertical angle to D? Across the bow tie, across the X, C. So C and D are vertical angles and they're also totally congruent, they equal each other. Okay, are A and C vertical angles? Not at all, but what's interesting is actually, could you make a case that A and C are linear pairs? Totally, this guy plus this guy forms a straight line. A and C are linear pairs. What about B and D? They're not vertical, they're not opposite the X, right? But they would be a linear pair. So vertical angles, <laughs> all it is is, you have an X, it's the two guys that are exactly across from each other on that little bow tie or on that little X. So those are the pairs of angles. So let me just throw a little curveball at you. Let me give you like an actual algebra problem that involves pairs of angles. So what if you had this problem, right? And you're looking at it and you're like, okay, what did that guy teach me about random pairs of angles? How are these related? Are they congruent? Are they the same? Well, I don't, they don't look the same. This one looks obtuse, this looks acute. Are they the X? Are they vertical angles? What's the deal? And remember, these are, <coughs> these are a linear pair. And if you remember, any two angles that form a line together are supplementary or they just add to 180. So you just take these two suckers here and you add them. So 4X plus 3 plus 2X minus 9 all has to equal to 180 degrees. And then you do a little bit of algebra, a little fancy algebra, 6X minus 6 equals 180. Maybe I'll add my 6 over here, right? So 6X equals 186. And being the math nerd that I am, I think I could do this in my head. It looks like X is 31. Be careful. If they asked you, let's say they designated this angle, you know, A and this one B, they could ask solve for X, which I did. So then, you know, X is 31, everyone's happy, I'm super smart. What if they say find angle A? Don't forget, you'd have to plug 31 back into X, do some math and find angle A. They didn't, they didn't ask us that, we're just finding X. So first thing I did was say, hey, this is a linear pair. I remember from this guy's lecture that linear pairs had 180, so I just added them, done. Okay, here's another little curveball coming at you. Okay, so here's a different problem. So same thing, let me just kind of look at it. What's going on here? This kind of looks like that whole X thing the guy was talking about, like, right? These two angles are across from each other in an X. And so these are definitely vertical angles. And if you remember, what are vertical angles? What does that imply? Do they add to something? Do they subtract? No, they're always exactly equal. So that's fine, I'll just set this up. 3X plus two equals 2X plus six. Do a little algebra, minus 2X, minus 2X, right? X plus two equals six. Maybe I'll minus two, minus two. X equals four. And again, it depends kind of what they're asking you to do, right? But in this one, if they ask me X, I solved for it. I knew that because they're vertical angles, this guy equals this guy, I set it up, I did some fancy math. Maybe they say, what is the top angle? What is the called A? What is angle A? I just still have to plug four back in here and solve for it. So don't forget to do that if they ask for it. But that's why you learn pairs of angles. You learn them because then you can do some math with them. If I knew vertical angles are congruent, I can do the math. If I know linear pairs out of 180, I can do the math. So that's it. Um, that's the, uh, the speech on pairs of angles. Uh, good luck in the section.